What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Bulls. Today's episode is presented to you by Bet Online. Today, uh, Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. On today's episode, we'll be breaking down the season of Nikola Vucevic. We'll get into the nitty gritty of everything of his season, offensively, defensively, and where we can see him fitting in this team next year. We'll get into all that and more on today's Locked On Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Hayes. That's Pat, the designer. We want to thank you guys for making Locked On Bulls your first listen every day. Locked On Bulls, a member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the season of Nikola Vucevic. We're going to break down and talk about his offense coming up here first. Uh, Pat, this been it was a it was a difficult shooting, especially from the three season for Nikola Vucevic, and he had one of his, one of the worst percentages from the three point range since he became a volume three point shooter. But we want to talk about more than that. Break down his offensive game as a whole. Now there were times in this season, as we saw, I mean, you complained about when we took over the show that they just did not go to Nikola Vucevic, especially in the second half after in in games where it was working during the first half. So I ask you. How do you break down the offensive season for Nikola Vucevic? Uh, I mean, listen, you you have to be 100% with it, right? Like, it, it wasn't a great stat-wise season. Now, he still did give you uh, uh, um, some good output, right? True shooting percentage, 52%, 19 points per game, 12 rebounds a game, 3.2 assists a game. Not not terrible, right? Nothing that, that I looked at and I'm like, oh, man, uh so I, I know like a lot of Bulls fans, we got to get him out of here. He's he's awful for this team. Like I, I look at Vooch as a player that even on a bad night, right, offensively, he can still give you a double-double and, and absolutely help you to a win. But the one thing that I will say is we have to understand that Nico is adjusting to a completely new role. Um, when When – you go from being the number one to the number three and your looks aren't coming. Not to say that that's an excuse, not to say that he shouldn't be ready for those looks to come. Right. But we're talking about a, a guy who wasn't able to get himself going as quickly. And because of that, offensively, he wasn't able to finish games at the efficiency that we're used to seeing with him. Right. Like there, there were how many games where you would watch, uh, uh, um, Vooch and just say why Why is he shooting like this why is he uh, uh, not going into the paint more we're seeing him attack more well because that now the offense is dictating that he does different things now his offensive game is dictating that hey we need you to be a shooter we need you to kind of stand out in that corner and shoot the ball instead of being down there being the focal point taking a lot of time off the shot clock setting yourself up in the post and getting the finish so offensively I can't say there's a there was a a it was a great season for him, right? Shooting uh, uh, averages dropped across the board. I believe he shot 31% from three this season. So mm -hmm. not pretty in that sense where he shot in 40% from three before, 38 even uh, percent from three before. But, I mean, listen, a guy who's becoming your third option that's able to give you 19 and 12 off of the bench. Or, or, I mean, not off of the bench, 19 and 12. Uh, in his in the third role, right, as the third player on this team, that's kind of what you ask for for your number three. You don't ask for your number three to give you 25 and, and 12 every night. You know what I'm saying? We were sitting there watching Vooch in the playoffs when the Bulls needed him to give him 25 and 12, and he was the one person that was able to do it. <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> it still is an issue when you have one of the lowest three-point shooting percentages of your career the lowest, I believe, or at least the second lowest free throw shooting percentage of your career, and yeah. one of the lowest field goal shooting percentages of your career. Now, it's it's he's hovered around the 47, 48, 46 percentile a, a few times in his career, but it's still one of the lowest, especially since he really became the Nikola Vucevic that we know. Yeah. So now that is also a product. Like if just looking at that raw number, you put that on the player. But as you said and alluded to, too, so it, there were long periods of the season where the offense just did not get him in the proper position. I also get your point of saying your third option. 
the issue is, is that there were times for long parts of the season where Nikola was not the third option. He had to be or should have been the second option um, that he just needed to because of injuries, things like that. And I think those are the moments where when he did not step up, it was more evident, especially once Lonzo went down and Zach mixed some games, things like that, um, where it was more evident the fact that, you know, we just didn't get the Nikola Vucevic that we kind of maybe expected to coming in this season. But as I said, you know, over on Chicago Bulls Central when the season first started and he started going through a slump and, you know, some people fall back on it, but you're, he's a 31-year-old center going into his 32 season. It's possible that that Nick is just starting to slide. It's just that's just it's it's a possibility. But as being your third option and maybe even sometimes your fourth option, depending on once everybody's healthy and what we see this team looks like, you know, Nick Vucci's percentages aren't that aren't that bad. They 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 were bad for how he played. But I think when you put that in perspective for a long period of time and how he played when comparing those to his other numbers, like you said, he was the main option on offense for a team that didn't have many expectations or many other good offensive players as a whole. So you it, you know comparing it against it, you do have to take some things into consideration. Just some things that are going to change. Um, but but as you said. There were so many times also, or as I think I said, that Nick was uh, Vooch was on and and the Billy Donovan just them. stopped going to him. Yeah. You can't put that all on Vooch. Like there were times where Vooch could have probably gave us 25 and 16 if he was put in better positions. And we'll talk about the defense here coming up next, but it's mind boggling to me when you have a player that's clearly needed to get in rhythm throughout the season and he gets in rhythm and then you don't go to him in the second half. Yeah. No, 100%. And there were some games. Listen, I'm not saying that every game this season is somebody else's fault with Vooch. There were some games Vooch yeah. absolutely played awful. Like there were, there, there were some games where Vooch just was shooting shots just to be out there, shot wasn't falling wasn't really giving you any production on the offensive end, wasn't giving you any production on the defensive end. There were those games. I'm not saying that those games didn't exist, but what I will say is when I look at Vooch's offensive game, I, I'm looking at where he is on the floor and how he's being used and what he's doing based on his offense, right? Like I said, mm -hmm. the assist numbers were low this season for Vooch. He only, only 3.2 assists per game. But how many times did we see Vooch pass to the open man because the other team was collapsing on him because there was no power forward in there for most of the season? We saw guys, literally two, three guys collapsing on Vooch. Vooch kicks it out to a wide open Kobe White in the corner. It clangs off the heel of the rim or an Io DeSumo or Patrick Williams when he came back, right? Like there was a lot of times where Vooch was creating good offense for the Chicago Bulls, but the players around uh, uh, Vooch weren't knocking down the shot. Like, yes, there were bad games for Vooch, but but to me, right, like, Vooch is more of a pass-first kind of center. Yeah. Like, if he's backing you in and he realized the defense is collapsing and he'll kick it out to you, boom, knock down the shot. And if you have to, if he's got to repost, now he's already deep enough in position where he can catch the ball on the post, make that little move, and get that mug to fall. I think that that's going to be more of a benefit to the Chicago Bulls moving forward, especially as they add better shooters to this team. But you have to have those guys. I think, I mean, honestly, right? Like if guys knock down two more shots a game that Vooch gets them, we're talking about a center that gave you 17, 5, and 11. You know what I'm saying? Instead yeah. of 17, 3, and 11. We're looking at his offensive game completely different because he's setting pieces up that are knocking down shots. But when the pieces don't knock down shots, we just say, oh, Vooch is, is being passive. No, he, he's kicking it to the open man. Those are two very different things to me. Yeah, def no, no, I, I definitely can. I definitely feel where you're coming from with that. <clears throat> um, it's, a, it's a combination of a few things, and I think that's something that – you know that we don't always take into consideration in in the in in a fair way. Uh, we just kind of look at look at those raw stats and just give it to it as as that's what it is. Yeah. One thing that I do want to go over too, as well with this, and I just I'm just you know I'm just looking at some things on on the, the overall stats by position. Um, still, Nikola Vucevic, and this is something I've said. I just wanted to make sure that it didn't change at all. While you know, since since things have, have stopped and whatnot, Nikola Vucevic by advanced analytics, which is still very important, not saying it's the end all be all, top 12 in every single statistical category for his position. Mm -hmm. 
It was top 10 there for a long time, and he was like an 8 and 9 in some. But overall, season stopped, dropped top 12 to top 15 in every single statistical category for his position. You give me that as the third option, I'll take that every day. Yeah, 100%. Now, the, the thing is, like you said, some games he wasn't the third option. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. they, Everybody got to like, be healthy. There, there's some there's some games where I, we absolutely can bring the hammer down on Vooch. And listen, I've done it on the live call. But yeah. there's there's some games where I'm not going to kill him based on the circumstances that are around him. It's not 2K. You can't just run through walls and finish. <laughs> like, there's one dude in the NBA that kind of does that, and he's Giannis. So, like... <laughs> All right, there you have it. So next up, we're going to be talking about Nikola Vucevic's defense over the course of the season. But first, I got to talk to you guys about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting and stats, sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball, and this weekend's run to the roses of the Kentucky Derby. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs to esports and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Okay, let's talk about where the defense starts and ends with Nikola Vucevic. Uh, it's, it was a difficult season for, for Nick, um, kind of like I did with the offense, so I want to kind of set the stage. Sometimes, and this is not always, Vooch wasn't put in the best situations defensively because his guards were letting people blow by him. And as somebody who's not the most laterally quick center, but he but Vooch also gave us some very good defensive efforts. I look at the I look at the games that we played against Milwaukee during the regular season and in the playoffs. He switched on to Giannis several times in the last couple of games we played against them, not in the playoffs, but in the regular season. And I was like, oh, it's about to be a massacre. And almost every single one of those possessions, he forced Giannis to pass it. So it's, it wasn't as bad of a season as some people would have it out to be. Um, still, overall, net it was it was pretty bad. He had one of the lowest defensive efficiency ratings o o over his career. Um, one of the 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 highest, and you know, with defensive efficiency rate, you want the number to be lower. Um, mm -hmm. so what do, what do you make of of Vooch's defense this season? I mean, I. I... I have a tough time saying that Vooch was an awful defender when when Vooch had the opportunity to kind of like be in a good position, he made good plays. The problem was a lot, like you said, with the guards letting people blow past the, uh, 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 where Vooch is in a, an awkward position, right? They blow past the guard. Vooch has to step up. Who's on your backside? Oh, is it six, uh, six foot nine Patrick Williams? No, it's six foot three Javante Green trying to box out a power forward. Mm -hmm. That that makes a big difference, right? And, it, and we don't look at Javante Green and say, oh, Javante, you're a bad defender because that's what Javante is known for. We look at Javante and say, oh, well, he's being put in a position where uh, uh, he's not able to get the stop there. But we don't look at Vooch that same way for stepping up and actually making the right defensive play and not being able to recover. I, I, I look at Vooch, and listen, there's a lot of things with Vooch's defense, right? If he's got to go head up, uh, back to the basket, somebody on him, Vooch gets overpowered. 100%. Joel Embiid backing him down. Joel Embiid's going to get past him. Um, Carl Anthony Towns backing him down. Carl Anthony Towns usually get, gets past him. Giannis backing him down. He actually did a better job, like you said, on Giannis. I'm not going to lie to you. I think I think we were all thoroughly surprised. Like It would be like, <laughs> oh, God, here comes the cook session. Oh, don't get yeah. dunked on. And then it's like, oh, Vooch survived. But I, I look at where the Bulls' situation was and the Bulls defensively where their situation was, right? Like, there was so many times where guys were trying to – uh, uh, um, overcommit in the paint to where now they're getting in the way of what Vooch might be able to do. How many times do we see guys just kind of packing the paint, trying to help him on the backside because they didn't have the size for it, and now all of a sudden there's too many people in the way? Like th mm -hmm. there's there's a lot that goes into the defensive side of this for me. And when I watch Vooch, yes, is he a great defender? I'm not gonna say that, but Vooch didn't come here as a great defender. Yeah. Vooch wasn't a great defender in Orlando. If we give Vooch backside help, though, which, as you saw, towards the end of the season, that defense all of a sudden started improving. Why? Because Patrick Williams started standing next to him, and you weren't just able to run in there and do whatever you wanted to do down low. Heck, even a little bit of time that he spent with Tristan on the floor with him, right? Like, you, you saw that when you had another threat to rebound the ball or to box out or defend, 
all of a sudden, Vooch played defense better. All of a sudden, we weren't looking at Vooch every single game like, why the heck aren't you able to get it going right now defensively? Why are you getting blown past right now defensively? Because there was somebody on his backside to help him out. And, and that, that's what it's all about. Like, you watch Golden State, you watch, uh, uh, um, you know, whatever, whatever, Phoenix, Boston. Everybody's on a string. Everybody moves together. Defensively, you're not – if one person adjusts, they roll with you. You also have to take into account that on that, like, a major part of your team could not move as well as he wanted to in Zach Levine, and so your defense can't rotate the same way as well. These are all facts. Uh, I, I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head there. It's really about who you put and the team you put around. And, and this is one of the things that I've always said. It's, team construction is important, right? It's easy to narrow things down on what one player doesn't do, but the fact of the matter is, is when you build a team, you build a team to cover certain weaknesses and amplify certain strengths. This team was meant to go into the season with Patrick Williams being there next to, next to Nikola Vucevic. And when we saw that, a little bit of what we did see see in that, yeah. it looked, or at least I saw enough to make me say, all right, if this is our front court next season, I can see it working much better than what we had when Javante and just not that's and that's not a slight to Javante. Javante had one of the biggest hearts on the all the Chicago Bulls. But hey, listen, yeah. at some point in time, when you're there, listen, you can't grow. All the heart in the world ain't gonna help you grow <laughs> if somebody just has more <laughs> length on you. And you know, it's good, it's good to see Pat out there with his seven-foot wingspan yeah. next to Nikola Vucevic and what that means. And so I think also one of the important things that this team can do on the bench to help Nikola Vucevic on defense is strengthening that bench. And when you have and get and that's going to be getting a player who hopefully, and I know hey, it's 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 gonna be a task, right? And if they can do it, shout out to AK and Eversley. But if they can get a player to come off the bench who can play next to Vooch while also at times playing next to Patrick Williams, that's gonna give you the most optimal lineup and chance to maximize the defensive potential of the front court. And so, listen, I trust A.K. and Eversley to be able to do it. But like you said, Nikola Vucevic's defensive season wasn't good. But it yeah. wasn't It wasn't all because of just his lack of defensive ability. Some of it was, listen, the, 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 what, what this team go, coming into the season that was meant to help cover Vuce's lapses, he didn't have it. He just didn't have it. There. And shout out to Tristan. But Tristan wasn't all he was cracked up to be when we got him in here either. <laughs> yeah, that that's a that's a whole different situation. I mean, I I feel like there's coming coming next season you're going to see it, it with health, right? Health is everything. But coming next season, you're going to see a a lineup construction that I think is going to fit well around not only just Zach Levine and DeMar, but also around Vooch because you, you can't forget about, like, I feel like the playoffs showed you so much with him. The playoffs mm -hmm. showed you what Vooch really can do if you put the ball in his hands and consistently allow him to cook. And I think that it's it's going to offer more of a, a aid to him on the defensive end because when he gets it going offensively, he's locked into the game. Those are his best defensive games. When he gets it going where he's making that little hook shot, that little float and all that, like you don't talk about Vooch getting cooked on the other end. You'd be like, oh, man, like was that a chase down block right there? What the heck was that? <laughs> what did we see right there? So I feel like that that in itself, right, like what you saw in the playoffs could carry over into next season even. And, and you might even see a real bounce back season from Nikola Vucevic from that aspect. Listen, I would love – Absolutely love to see that. And FYI, in the playoffs this season, not only was Nikola Vucevic's shooting percentages better, his overall rankings were better, but his defensive rating was also considerably better by almost three points. Again, him next to Patrick Williams works, people. It, it makes works. a difference. So, <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just going to leave that at that. Hey, man, the Bulls have done – to me, those two together have done an excellent job 
of, uh, of, uh, of building out this, this defense. Uh, and I'll tell you what else is being built out here, man. Before we get into this final topic, that wasn't really a good one. We'll work on that. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Built Bar for us uh, showing support for the show, man. Summer is coming. I'm walking outside in flops and shorts. And with summer, you're going to need some food on the go. Built Bar is the perfect snack to take with you and the family on vacations. You can throw them in your bag and your kids' backpacks. Make sure that everyone has a bar so you're fueled up. For your summer adventures. Let me tell y'all about Built Bar, man. The At Built Bar, we're talking about the puffs every single time. All the Built Bars and the puffs covered in 100% real chocolate. That means with Built Bar, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. Hey, if that's not enough, there's a bunch of flavors for you. We're talking about banana cream pie, churro flavor, and the and marshmallow puffs. And come talking about 140 calories, right? Most built, uh, 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 most candy bars, you're eating too many sugars, you're eating too many carbs, you're eating too many, uh, you got too many calories in there. Most built bars only contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Here's the thing about built bar, man, they worry about making it taste good first. And then they figure out how to make it healthy. And I'm, I'm telling y'all, dog, they do it every single time. So here's what I need y'all to do. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off of your order. Use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order at Built.com. Get them puffs, man. Stop playing with the puffs. <laughs> puffs is fire, bro. All right, man. Yeah, the puffs are puffs are amazing. Um, let's <laughs> move, move into the last topic for today. So... We kind of touched on it a little bit, but what <clears throat> what do you see for Vooch if he's as long as he's on this roster next season, which we both do and have said that we expect him to be? What role do you see him fit in next year? Because I tell you what, if everyone is healthy next year, that's Lonzo's knees together. Zach comes into the season healthy, no issues with Demar. Patrick Williams stays healthy. I really do see that Vooch may move at times to being even that fourth option sometimes on offense. Um, I hope that they get to use Lonzo a little bit more. Um, I think that Vooch is probably with better efficiency, even as sometimes being the fourth option, to see him get numbers similar to what he did, like I said, on better efficiency, meaning that he's scoring more points per possession that he has to score. Yeah. Um, but I can see Vooch's shots may be going down, but with that efficiency, his impact staying the same. What do you think? It's going to be interesting to see, right, because you're essentially asking him to, hey, we need you to, like, we know you're the third role, but, like, keep declining. Like, keep going into this role because we need you to win, but we don't want you to be Orlando Vooch. We don't even want you to be first-year Chicago Vooch. Mm -hmm. We want you to be rebounds and get us some good production down low Vooch. And that's a tough thing to ask a player to do. Like, at the end of the day, right, these guys are human beings. Like, it's essentially going to your job every day and saying, hey, uh, we realize you've been here 40 years. Um, but we're slowly getting ready to get rid of you. So just like stay afloat for a little while and keep your mind focused on what we tell you to do. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, that's a tough decision to, to ask somebody to do, but for the bulls to be successful, we kind of need to see that, right? Like, we've heard all, all season going into the off season, Patrick Williams, Patrick Williams, mm. Patrick Williams. How does Patrick Williams get those shots? They got to come from somebody. They're probably coming from Vooch. I think Vooch improves the game for Lonzo ball, right? Though. Um, if you see Lonzo out in the corner, if he's hundred percent healthy, we're, we're doing all of this with assume assumed health. Yeah. Um, if, if Vooch is kicking it out the Lonzo ball out in that corner, right? You're probably talking about that scenario where I said with the offense in the beginning where you've got a guy that's giving you 17, 11, and five, six assists per game because Lonzo's going to knock that three ball down. Not Lonzo was shooting it over a 40% clip this season. Mm -hmm. So I think, the, I think really this team fits together well. I think that this core fits together well. And I think that we saw them fit together well. But once the injury set in, there wasn't anything to replace that fit, right? Like, I, I, it's, it's almost like, do you have a one-for-one -one replacement off of your bench that can come in and give you uh, um, a similar play style? We didn't have that. We didn't have somebody that could replace Lonzo Ball. Io DeSumo did his best at it, right? But he just doesn't shoot the ball as well as Lonzo does right now. Not to say he never will, but at this point in the season, he wasn't shooting the ball as well as Lonzo was. And so 
that kick out went from being at a 40% knockdown clip to a 34 to 30 even at times. You know what I'm saying? I think he finished the season shooting at about 26% from three. So, like, it just changes everything that you want to do, and it changes Vooch's offensive game. But I think with health, right, Vooch takes a step forward offensively because on the flip side of that, right, if guys are knocking down threes, when do we see Vooch go to work? When these mugs were knocking down shots and you couldn't just say, I'm not going to let Vooch shoot. There's a very inverse relationship with everything. If mm-hmm. if the Bulls can can find guys that can knock down shots, you will see a very efficient Nikola Vucevic because there'll be no way they can they can pack the paint. All right, that's fair. That's and I would assume we'll surprisingly finish the season with a 37.6 three point percent. I'm impressed by that. He was That's shooting it crazy. real high. He was shooting it real high at the beginning of the at season, the beginning yeah. of the year, yeah. and then like he slowly, like I think in that final 25 game stretch before the last like four or five games, he was shooting it real bad. <laughs> yeah, but like, we talk often about the 50, 40, 90, right? Yeah. So in his rookie season, Io DeSumo 52 percent from field goal range, 37.6 percent from three point range. Now only 67.9 percent. From from free throw, we need to see that go up. But listen, those yeah. numbers bring a lot of you know. We'll talk about Io DeSumo when we get there. But, but even the yeah, improvement I get excited of him, talking right? about Io. Even the improvement of him, like as these young guys improve, don't you think that improves Vooch's game? Like, yeah, he might oh, have to sure. take less of a role, but now he's getting at the more efficient guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think too, how much Patrick Williams grows in this offseason is going to make Vooch's season that much easier. If it, Like, having more threats out there, which when you look at Patrick Williams, Zach Levine, Lonzo Ball, out there with Nikola Vooch, they're all solid three-point threats. DeMar isn't really a three-point threat, but they open up room and space for DeMar and Vooch to get to work. Listen, our starting five, brings a lot of excitement to bring into next season yeah with with, when you think about potential and i'm not expecting pat to take this leap into being all of a sudden this 20 and 8 guy or anything like that but what we saw from him as you know he got more comfortable physically and got more comfortable just taking shots yeah it brings so much excitement into what you can expect and how easy like hey listen and and and, you know that your point i didn't touch on the more i mean touch on it then when we when you said asking Vooch to do less. I don't necessarily know if that's hard for Vooch. When you go into being 32 year old, 280 pounds, 6'11, if you're saying, hey, do less because the guys around you are going to be so much better that hey, you don't you don't have to work as hard out there. I don't know yeah. if that's going to be as hard of a pill for Vooch to swallow. It depends, right? It it depends. By the way, 28% in his last 25 games, though. So he he had to be shooting red hot <laughs> early in the season. He had to be shooting above 40% IO. Uh, at, at, <laughs> early in the season because he finished 37% from three on the season? Or was that just in the playoffs? No, that is the season. In the he playoffs, like, we, let's, go, let's go to playoffs. His in last playoffs, 25 games, playoff, 28.8%. So it's playoffs, he shot 30% overall from the field, 23.1% from three-point range, and he was 100% from free throws in the playoffs. That's crazy. <laughs> he had to be shooting red hot at one point. And he kind of like we remember he was, but still, like that's a yeah. that's a wild stat that he finished 37%. But I think I think it's a it'll be a tough pill to your point for Vooch to swallow, in in my opinion, because we're talking about literally two seasons. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean the, literally two seasons, right? Like Vooch last season still came in and was still the Bulls number one because Zach ended up getting COVID, right? So he's still 23 points a game, 12 rebounds a game, um, shooting at 40% from three over here. You know what I mean? Season before that, 24 points per game, 12 points, uh, 12 rebounds a game, you know? And then all of a sudden, now he's not, not only going not to the number two option, but in two seasons, you've dropped to the third option. We'd be talking about him possibly being the fourth option last year. That's a long but drop I think it, two years. But see, that's the thing, though. As long as it's coming with wins, I don't think Vooch gives a damn. I would hope not, right? Like, that's yeah. that's the thing you hope for. Like, I, I like 
everybody hates Zach Levine for like, well, not everybody, but a lot of people hate Zach Levine for essentially letting DeMar take over the team. And I'm like, Zach want to win. Yeah. Y'all realize in his whole career, he ain't never, Vooch is kind of in the same situation. Vooch has only won, what, twice? He's only had winning seasons twice. Something like that. That sounds Three times, right. including this season. So, like, maybe it is that. I hope it is that. Like, you hope it's that mentality. Because, like, you're definitely going to win with this team. But it might be at the cost. Like, are you going to take that Mark Aguirre role? That's essentially mm. what you'd be asking them to do. Like, hey, we know you were a dog where you was at. That was he down in Dallas, I think he was. Mm. Uh, but we need you to come here and be a, a dude. But a really good dude. But a dude. I hope he's got that mentality, but that might be a tough pill for him to swallow. I don't know. Yeah, well, I guess I guess it all remains to be seen when we see this Bulls team play next season. Hey, we could be wrong. His role may what may move up. Who's to say, who's, <laughs> <it's too>. <laughs> who, who's to say that Demar can have the season that he had this season? You you know, I mean, you you the the, the way that Demar's game goes is easy to say. Hey, listen, Demar's going to be able to do this again next season. But hey, as we've seen. Anybody who's been around the NBA long enough knows that 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 started to decline when you're in your mid thirties can literally go from looking great one season to the next season looking very Real very bad. regular. Real bad. We've seen so, some drop offs in this. That's league. what I'm saying. And, and, and like like I said, I don't I don't expect it to yeah. happen. Like it's not something that I'm saying. Hey, this this is what I'm expecting for Demar's season to be. But again, much like we're talking about with Vooch, Demar's going to be 33 years old next season. While not not old in real life, right? But in basketball, that's when you start to see those type of declines start at, at least rearing their head. And you know, Demar doesn't have the type of game where you where you expect a steep fall off all of a sudden. So I'm not expecting that. But Demar stats this season: twenty seven point nine points per game, five point two rebounds, four point nine assists. That twenty seven point nine may turn into quickly twenty four next season. Yeah. And you might need Vuce to step up in that situation. And is yeah. that – listen, that's not – here's the thing. 100% Zach, along with Vooch possibly needing to step up or P. Will taking more of the shots. Like, I, I'm okay with that. I expect that, right? Yeah. I feel like the DeMar and bringing – even bringing in Vooch was to show Zach we want to win now. But it's also, hey, we got to be competitive now while these guys get good. Yeah, definitely. And I, that, Sometimes yeah, you got to show thing. us how to win. <laughs> exactly. You know, people thought – Bringing in DeMar says, oh, well, that mean, means our window is only three years. No, that means that, hey, we got three years before Pat. We absolutely need to rely on you. Now we yeah. got some time. You know, yeah. you, you can come along. We, we can we can bring you along slowly. You got you got three years to learn to be more aggressive. But at the end of this three years, Pat, you got to do your damn job. P. Will, you got to do your job, bro. You got to you got to be aggressive about it. Um, so that's really what that's about. This Bulls window can be extremely long when you look at some of the young players and how they could possibly develop so it all depends on that yeah it all depends on that and that's really what it boils down to but overall exciting season for vooch next season exciting season for the bulls overall and i just can't wait i can't wait to see the moves we make this offseason once once listen it's it's, it's going to be crazy i did a whole yeah. cap breakdown the fact of the matter is for those who don't really pay close attention to the cap the bulls have a mid-level exception of 10.1 million dollars or I think that, or do they have the $6.1 million exception? They have one of those two. They have a trade player exception of $6 million. They got they can sign two veteran minimum players, and they're, they'll are they be sitting close to the luxury tax at that point. So I can't wait to see what this team does. It's going to be interesting, man. Before we close out, what would you say? Good season, bad season for Vooch? Uh, I'm gonna, if I had to give it a letter grade for Vooch, I'm giving him a solid C+. Plus. Solid C+. Plus. I'd probably say that. I'd yeah. probably say that because it took him so long to adjust to the role. Yeah. I mean, we really didn't see Vooch get good and consistently. Yeah, consistently until. And then he went down with COVID. Now, when he came to... back from COVID. Yeah. That's really was... when you saw him kind of start to get it together a little yeah. bit. That When they went on that road trip. I'd probably give him. I'd give him a. B minus, because I mean, I can't give you a C. You give me a double double. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, but, <laughs> but a B minus is close to a C, dog. Like, you got a, you got a 80, but like, it was, you got it by a point one on that mug. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I, I'd probably give him a B minus in that situation. Still give you a double double good production, but not what we had, not what we thought we were going to get, but also not the team that we thought we were getting when we got Vooch in here.
That is absolutely true. Absolutely true. That's it from us for today, Pat. Give me social media, man. Let's get up out of here. Hey, man, follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. It's at P-A-T-T-H-E-D-E-S-I-G-N-E-R. Yes, I did go to public school, but they taught me how to spell. Also, follow us on everything at Locked on Bulls. Appreciate that love, man. Absolutely. You can follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H-A-I-Z-E. Thank you for making Locked on Bulls your first listen every day. Now, for your second listen, go and listen to Locked on NBA, where you hear the Locked on experts take a deep dive inside the playoffs with insight and analysis affecting all 30 teams. You can even catch our very own Pat the Designer over there uh, once a week. But that is it from us for today. We love you guys, man. Peace out, y'all. Peace.